Hi, my name is Michael Wong, and I'm the chair of the Sickle Working Group in Kronos. Today, I'd like to talk about three things, Sickle's past, present, and future, what might be in Sickle 2020, the Sickle ecosystem in 2020. This is the full version of the shorter live talk that's going to be delivered as the Sickle State of the Union address on Tuesday, April 28th, before the IWACO SickleCon live panel. Next slide, please. I want to thank numerous people for helping me with these slides, but I have to claim all credit for any errors. Next slide, please. But let's talk about sickle past, present, and future. Next slide, please. Chrono has lots of related standards. Sickle is a part of the Chrono's portfolio of open specifications and belongs in the parallel computing group. Next slide, please. It is a single source C++ parallel programming language that takes ISO C++ application code, even TensorFlow, and compiles them with a host CPU compiler and a device SQL compiler, which generates code for many kinds of devices. Next slide, please. These are the latest implementations. DP C++ is Intel's open source implementation using Clang and supports CPUs, multiple CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs through OpenCL with Spear V and NVIDIA GPUs through CUDA. Compute CPP is CloudPlay's commercial implementation, also based on Clang, although there is also a free download, which supports any CPU as well as a host of GPUs, FPGAs, and specialized accelerators through OpenCL with Spear or Spear V, as well as NVIDIA's GPUs through PTX ingested through OpenCL. It's the first conforming implementation of SQL 121. Xilinx's open source SQL implementation is called Tricycle, using an OpenMP backend for any CPU and OpenCL with Spear LLVM for Xilinx FPGAs. Heidelberg University has an implementation called Hipsicle that uses OpenMP for any CPU, CUDA for NVIDIA GPUs, and Rockham for AMD GPUs. Next slide, please. In 2018 at IWACO in Oxford, I showed this slide setting the stage for Sickle Pass when we had Sickle 1.2 in 2015 and Sickle 1.2.1 .1 in 2017 and their alignment with C11. Sickle 121 conformance test was open source and made public in May 2019. Next slide, please. Today, I'm unveiling this slide about the possible future roadmap of SICL, where in 2020, we plan to release first a provisional in Q3 for public review and feedback, leading to a final in Q4. We plan this version to be based on C17. This means it enables exciting C features, such as class template argument deduction, otherwise known as CTAG, and deduction guides that makes code less verbose. There are also numerous other great features which I'm going to highlight. You will also see that we released SQL 121 in 2017 and previously 1.2 in 2015. And if you were to predict that we seem to be settling down to a cadence of releasing new releases every 1.5 to 3 years, you would be correct. This is because we have adopted to a bus train model of delivery. You will also see that we have changed the naming scheme from aligning with OpenCL version to naming by year to allow us to be based on multiple backend options in addition to OpenCL, which remains our primary backend. You will also see that we are projecting tentatively, of course, that a future SQL will be released after 2021, exact version to be named later according to year, and will likely be based on C20, which will be released at the end of this year. This shows our title ISO C++ alignment, injecting our heterogeneous knowledge into ISO and adapting C++ features. Next slide, please. I wanna show what a pleasure it has been to see SQL growth since 2016. 
by my count, starting from when I first attended in Frankfurt to the last meeting recently in Barcelona, we have doubled in size by two times from averaging 15 people to over 30 people in the last face-to-face -face meeting. We continue to have strong um, attendance from Intel, Xilinx, Coldplay, AMD, ARM, Qualcomm, ANL, University of Salerno, and University of Bristol. Eventually, we have, externally, we have been active in CPPCon, giving SQL talks and tutorials in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. We have also had boss in SC 17, 18, and 19. In the last year, we actually had a separate standalone SQL buff along with our heterogeneous ISO C++ update buff. At SC19, the number of SQL events exploded from two to three SQL events in 2018 to six to eight SQL-related events in 2019 in the form of papers, talks, buffs, and related keynotes at various workshops. As you know, in the past, SICL held an annual workshop called DHPC C++. I know it's a mouthful <laughs> in IWACO, as it was not yet its own working group. On September 22, 2019, that date became Independence Day for SICL because SICL became its own working group and now is held as an integrated conference, SICLCon with IWACO. Next slide, please. The next few slides drive home that growth in the working group and contributions more clearly. I lead an insanely talented group of people who are dedicated to improving the landscape of SICL. And I'm sorry I could only show this list as there's only so much room on the slide and it's to stay legible. But I include in this acknowledgement to people in the face-to-face -face and online GitHub. I'm sorry if I missed other people. Next slide, please. I show here how the commits have spiked and have grown in our internal GitLab. You can see from the spikes when we are about to release and the massive recent spike in activity as we prepare for SQL 2020. Next slide, please. Then these are the top committers, but I want to say the effort is a large group effort. But want to call out Renan for these stats and being our diligent editor and spec builder. Next slide, please. Finally, what you have all been waiting for. Let's talk SQL 2020. Next slide, please. Now we switch to look at what might be in SQL 2020, which you can see is still under construction everywhere. Next slide, please. First, I want to point out we're moving towards more openness with SQL, taking public contributions for fixes, as well as suggestions for features. You can now see many companies' features on their SQL feature Git repo. These are the ones that have been agreed by the SQL working group to be made public early. This enables a more rapid feedback cycle. The way it works is this. SQL hosts the latest public ratification, currently one to one. It allows open access and contribution of merge requests to fix existing features on GitHub. Kronos GitLab hosts the next version of SQL, available only to the working group. But some SQL features are deemed open by the working group and host on company Git repo and take public contributions. Other SQL features are developed under Kronos IP inside GitLab. Both groups progress from extensions to core. After ratification, we move the GitLab ratify spec to GitHub. We do conformance tests and tests for conformant implementations, and then we iterate. Next slide, please. First, this is the main slide. It shows what might be in SQL 2020 and in the top right box, our general larger philosophy that we have followed in our change from SQL 121 to SQL 2020. We want easier integration with C++ 17, less verbose language that has smaller code size and simplify the common patterns. We wish to enable multiple backends by simplifying interoperability while at the same time ease porting of C++ applications to SQL, improving programmability. We aim to strike a balance for performance and stability by enabling backwards compatibility with previous release. But we also selectively break API to achieve higher performance. We expect that breakage to be minor 
from SQL 121 to SQL 2020. On the top left, you will see some of the features we already have, which we'll have talks in this conference. I draw your attention to generalization, program modules, and host tasks interop by Gordon Brown. We will also have unified shared memory and in order queues from James Broadman. In the bottom right, you will see there are many features in the pipeline. And on the far right, you see that our main goal is converging SICO and ISO C++ while continuing to strongly support OpenCL, driving to support more kinds of chips. The main diagram illustrates our philosophy of moving from SICO 121 to SICO 2020 and iterate the cycle with new releases every 1.5 to three years from previous to next release. Next slide, please. The SICO ecosystem is growing rapidly. This highlights the already large and growing SICO ecosystem, starting with implementations on the left, and then there are the many research papers. Of this, I want to point out the Exascale Computing Project and Celerity for SICO Cluster. The Celerity programming environment seeks to enable developers to scale C++ applications to accelerate clusters with relative ease, while leveraging and extending the SICO domain-specific embedded language. By having users provide minimal information about how data is accessed within compute kernels, Celerity automatically distributes work in data. Exascale Computing Project, or ECP, allows SICO to run on Exascale supercomputer systems using Intel chips being built at Argonne National Lab, and it is aiming to reach exaflop computing. Much of this will be shown in Hal Finkel's keynote. There are now also several benchmarks involving SICO. I want to call out University of Bristol's Babel stream that measures the performance portability of SICL, along with other popular acceleration languages such as OpenMP, OpenCL, CUDA, and OpenACC. Over time, this has increased to a suite of four to five benchmarks, including TLE, that measures acceleration performance. There's also Intel's Jeff Hammond's parallel research kernel. Um, it's a suite that contains a number of kernel operations, plus a simple build systems intended for a Linux compatible environment. Most of the code relies on open standard programming models, including SICL, and thus can be executed on many computing systems. I love some of the conclusions that Jeff drawn about some of the programming languages, usability and ease of porting. There are also many libraries for linear algebra, machine learning, and parallel acceleration frameworks. At the bottom, you will see the active working group companies attending the weekly calls, which is now two times a week. Next slide, please. In this slide, I want to point out what an extraordinary adoption it has been to see SQL grow into HPC space with the Aurora supercomputer in exascale computing. I attribute this to the fact that we lead ISO C++ with a language that uses standard C++, but augmented with heterogeneous dispatch for many devices from many vendors which is the promising road to get to exascale computing using accelerators. You see, you see here that SICL through Intel's DPC++ is adopted to be the programming model for Aurora, the first coral exascale computer using Intel processors. There are actually two more coming, Frontier and Al Capitan, and they will be delivered with AMD processors. Although no programming model has been decided yet, I will point out that SICL can run on Rockham as one of our implementations as Hipsicle has demonstrated to work on those processors. Next slide, please. Sicko had tremendous growth in the last three years, with working group collaborative participation up 100%. We now have an active presence in supercomputing due to US National Lab's interest and Intel support for Aurora supercomputing. We have active open source collaborative implementation in LLVM Clang, which hosts its own weekly meeting. We're seeing adoption now by HPC, for exascale computing and self-driving car domain, as well as some in, in FPGA, AI, and machine learning, and custom chips. We are going to continue tight integration with ISO C++ and OpenCL, but open to adopting other backends. Look for more open collaboration using GitHub and continue the cadence of ratification every 1.5 to 3 years, depending on manpower, just like ISO C++. 
And just like ISO C++, we plan to look ahead to a future where we integrate their features, such as executives, coroutines, futures, adapt the property mechanism, concepts, modules, and parallel algorithm with ranges. Next slide, please. Sickle 2020 is coming in a few months in Q3. When it comes out, I want to urge feedback to tell us what features you would like to add that are not in Sickle 2020 and what you would like to aim for in future Sickle. So how do you join Sickle? I'm glad you asked. There are many ways. Next slide, please. In this one slide, you're going to see all the ways you can join Sickle. Three out of four of them need no money. Anyone can suggest a feature or effects. And a small fee will allow you to participate in the design of features in the working group and a larger voice in the future of Sickle. Next slide, please. Sickle is creating cutting edge royalty free open standard for heterogeneous C compute, vision, and inference acceleration. We have a Sickle Con tutorial on Monday, April 27, and a live session on Wednesday where you can ask Sickle experts questions. Here's the time and address. I'm Michael Wong, Chair of Sickle. And I encourage you to join Kronos in its effort to lead and accelerate a portfolio of useful standards to enhance your company's leadership in the industry. Thank you.